And what is your position at the hospice, Mr. Wellman? I counsel people with AIDS. Over the past year, how many people have you counseled? Short term, over a hundred. Long term, perhaps two dozen. And how long have you worked there? Eleven years. And everyone you care for is dying? We're all dying, Mr. Bakey. I mean, the people in the hospice are terminally ill. Most of those who come to us will die within a year. Isn't it true that many cancer patients experience excruciating pain? Yes, that's common. You ever counseled anyone to commit suicide? Objection, Your Honor. Relevance. This trial isn't about the right to die. It's about whether the defendant shot Bobby Holland. The issues surrounding right to die are murky in this state, Mr. Stone. The testimony seems to me irrelevant. The witness will continue. Oh, I've counseled people on suicide, yes. Uh, we call it letting yourself be snowed under. And what do you counsel them? Well, we suggest that they go to England, where doctors have the right to assist their patients in dying. Thank you. Mr. Wellman, have you ever given to anyone in your hospice lethal chemicals, a gun, any device that might help them commit suicide? No. Why not? I've been told it's against the law. We've established a hotline to answer questions about AIDS. How many of those calls have you answered personally, Mr. Gordon? Thousands. I volunteer three nights a week. I've been doing it for seven years. Do the callers ever ask you about suicide? Frequently. And what do you tell them? That dying of AIDS is a difficult death, and that they have the right to take their own life when the pain becomes too great. Your witness, Mr. Stone. Now, Mr. Gordon, as a gay activist, you're familiar with the current state of treatment for AIDS? Reasonably. And you're aware that AZT and other drugs are prolonging the life of these patients? Yes. And that uh, people have lived with AIDS for several years? Yes, I know that. But I also know that in the end, it's a gruesome death. People with AIDS do not go gently into that good night. But you also know that some gay men, out of embarrassment, might not seek treatment and commit suicide instead. Are you in favor of that? I'm in favor of gay men taking power over their lives. Uh, no more questions, Your Honor. Excuse me. Are you Ben Stone? Yes, sir. Gay bashing son of a bitch, leave us alone to run our own lives and deaths. Could get worse. Well, you think I need a police guard? Oh, you think it's a joke? Gay activists don't shoot people. I wouldn't be so sure you're safe, Ben. Jack Curry has AIDS. Julia DeBakey just released it. It's time to bail out of this. It just seems like revenge at this point. Find us something, anything. Tonight? Yeah, go back over the evidence. Give us a reason to drop the charges against Curry. Anybody gotten an idea what we're looking for? Remeasure everything. Distance of the body from the bed, blood markings, all of it. And read us for prints. Make a map of where you get every print. I don't know. We're just gonna go through everything. How's the jaw? Only hurts when I prosecute. So keep me out of court until the swelling goes down. Two bookcases were turned over, pushed from behind. Yeah, we redusted. Full palm prints on the back of both. Both sets of prints belong to Bobby Holland. Curry's prints weren't on them. Which means Holland trashed the place himself to make it look like a burglary. Which means he wanted to die. Maybe to us. Meaning? It's convincing emotionally, but not legally. Uh, the prince could have been put there a year before, and as to state of mind, he could have changed it the microsecond before Curry pulled the trigger. But does it convince you?
Curry's already under a sentence of death. That's as much payment as anyone could ask for. Drop it completely. It's the right thing to do. He pleads to promoting a suicide. He does no time. Yeah. You got a copycat. A woman from Queens just shot her retarded son. She says she got the idea of a mercy killing from the Holland case. Well. We have no choice. We keep going. This morning, I was just another ruthless DA. Now I'm running the Inquisition. Mr. Stone, why do you want to put a dying man in jail? Mr. Stone, if you were dying of age, would you want someone to end your misery? Mr. Gordon asks, do I want to put a dying man in jail? The answer is no. But we're asking a more important question in this courthouse. Does Jack Curry have the right all by himself to put a dying man in his grave? Mr. Stone, you allow regular customers to charge their drinks. Well, not exactly charge. You got to make a payment on your tab every once in a while. Did Bobby Holland pay his bill regularly? He ran a tab on and off for the last two or three years. Paid a little on it now and then, never let it get much over a hundred bucks. Did that change, Mr. Rowan? Well, a couple, you know, a couple of weeks before Bobby died, he comes in, he lays 120 on the bar and says, this is for the bill plus a tip for me. I said, you know, Bobby, well, you, you hit the lottery? He said, no, I just want to pay my bill. And after that, he paid cash. Your own son. He handed you the gun. What did you say? I told him I didn't. I think I could go through with it. And what did he say? What words did he use? He said, Dad, if you ever wanted to do anything for me, do this. Thank you. No more questions. Mr. Holland, I know this is difficult, so bear with me. You testified that your son wanted to shoot himself. He had a gun. Why didn't he? Were his reasons religious? No. Was he worried about the pain he'd cause other people? No. Then why do you think your son was unable to take his life? said he was afraid to die. Thank you, sir. <laughs> 